CBS Tonight. If Stanley Tookie Williams were just another vicious convict on death row trying to evade execution, or if he had been a vicious gang leader who now teaches school kids how to avoid becoming what he used to be, or if Williams had been nominated for a Nobel Peace Prize, not won one, just nominated for one, chances are it wouldn't have made a 60-minute story. But because he's all three, an inmate on death row who teaches inner-city kids how to avoid joining gangs, and a nominee for the Nobel Peace Prize, his is a 60-minute story. Stanley Williams has spent 23 years, nearly half his life, at San Quentin State Prison near San Francisco, awaiting execution for robbing and murdering four people. Williams says since he's been on death row, he's had time to reflect on the violence and destruction he caused by founding the Crips, the most notorious street gang in America. And 11 years ago, in an effort to redeem himself, he made an appeal to street gangs everywhere to make peace. Working together, we can put an end to this cycle that creates deep pain in the hearts of our mothers, our fathers, and our people who have lost loved ones to this senseless violence. Now, at age 50, Stanley Williams is literally trying to rewrite his violent history. From his nine by four foot prison cell, he has authored nine books for school children that warn about the perils of gangs and violence, gangs and drugs, gangs and self-esteem, and about the harsh realities of life in prison. And from death row, Williams has been running a one-man multimedia campaign to promote his anti-gang message, which extends from the internet, where he has his own website, to a reverential made-for-TV movie about his life. I used to be the king of the Crips. Look at my kingdom now. And to radio stations across the country, which are running a public service announcement featuring Stanley Williams. You don't want to be in a gang. I've turned my life around. You can too. I'll show you how. And what may be unheard of for a convicted murderer, Williams is actually invited by public schools to talk directly to students by telephone from death row. We sat in one day recently when Williams used one of the three hours of phone time he's allotted per week to call a class at Leadership High School in San Francisco. Many of the students come from gang-infested neighborhoods and have experienced firsthand the effects of gang violence, like 10th grader Orlando. A friend of mine is from another school was shot and killed. And um, a couple weeks ago, uh, another friend of mine was shot, but he survived. The students who had read William's book, Life in Prison, prepared a list of questions for him. Hi, Mr. Williams. Uh, hello. Hi, my name is Marianne. Hello, Marianne. Hey, uh, my question is, your book talks about transformation. Mm -hmm. How do we know it's sincere? Uh, my work speaks for itself. I'm not trying to convince anyone of my transformation. I know I have changed. God knows I have changed. And the individuals who are listening to my voice should be able to detect that uh, I've actually made a transformation. What caused you to change? It took uh, years and years for me to uh, experience a change. I started off reading a lot. It opened up a new world for me, and uh, in time, I developed a conscience, and I was no longer uh, filled with uh, self-hate. So my question is, are you afraid of dying or death? Why or why not? Hey, that's a nice question. I like that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> pretty profound. Um, well, honestly, uh, I don't want to die, but uh, death is a constant reminder here. But it's something that uh, I live with and I can't dwell upon all the time because I have to do what I can in order to write these books. The students told us that what Stanley Williams has to say is having an impact on them at a critical time in their lives when the pressure can be strong to join a gang. He really sincerely made a change and is trying to help us and I think that I commend him for that. I know for sure it makes me want to stay out of San Quentin. What did he say that makes you want to stay out of San Quentin? Well, just describing everyday things. The violence, having to look over your shoulder, you don't want it to, so you don't get stabbed. Everything. Prison is just not a place you want to be. 
Some people say that he's not sincere, that this is a ploy to get off of death row or to get out of prison. How would you respond to that? I think some of those people are simple-minded because they see, they think that people can't really change. But what he has done is turned his whole life around and you can see that he's sincere because all the books he's written, the trouble he's going through to try to turn people uh, the way that are going down the path he did. It is Stanley Williams' work with these children and thousands of others who've read his books that prompted a member of the Swiss parliament to nominate him for a Nobel Peace Prize four years ago, placing him in the company of people like Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., the Dalai Lama, and Mother Teresa. Williams was nominated again this year by California professor of philosophy, Philip Gasper. Here is somebody with so, so few resources, um, but through strength of personality and perseverance, he has managed to have this enormous impact. Uh, I think he's an incredible role model. But, you know, this is a man who has been convicted of, of four murders. There's no question about the founding of the Crips, the violence and life of mayhem that he led. I, I don't understand how you then nominate someone like that for the Nobel Peace Prize. Well, there's no question that he has had, you know, a, a violent past. But, you know, the same is true of uh, some other people that have won the Nobel Peace Prize as well. Henry Kissinger was awarded it in 1973, and, you know, many people would claim that he's a war criminal. Um, F.W. de Klerk got it uh, with the end of apartheid. He'd uh, supervised that system of racism and oppression. Um, but the Nobel Peace Prize isn't awarded for what your past is like. You don't have to have an unblemished past. It's awarded on the basis of, have you made a contribution towards peace? And that, I think, is what is, what is true of Stanley Williams. Not according to Vernell Crittenden, a San Quentin prison official who's been monitoring Stanley Williams for 23 years, ever since he arrived on death row. I am aware that he has been nominated. I've actually had the opportunity to spend several hours with Mother Teresa when she visited here at San Quentin as I was one of her personal escorts uh, through the prison. And Stanley Williams is no Mother Teresa. What do you think he's trying to accomplish with these books? Well, I think that all of this is all part of uh, uh, his way of attempting to escape the executioner and being held accountable for the heinous crime he committed on March 11th, 1979, when he shot a 67-year-old man in a, in a motel and shot his 63-year-old wife, then turned and shot his 43-year-old uh, daughter. And I think that he's trying to escape that uh, consequence. Although Stanley Williams has lost all of his numerous appeals so far, he still maintains he's innocent of the four murders that landed him in prison. We went to San Quentin recently to meet Williams. We weren't allowed to bring our television cameras inside, but we were permitted to have these photographs taken in a visitor's cage on death row. The next day, I spoke with Williams by speakerphone. Some of your critics have said that, that you're writing these books is merely a, a ploy by a, a guilty man, and that what you want to do is do nice things for society only after you've been locked away and sentenced to die. If that were true, there would be hundreds of others here and abroad doing likewise before and after me. I'm not a coward and I would never step on the backs of children to save my life. The Federal Appeals Court in California, which a year and a half ago upheld Stanley Williams' death penalty conviction, also made a highly unusual statement in support of Williams, saying that his laudable efforts opposing gang violence and his good works and accomplishments since incarceration may make him a worthy candidate for clemency from the governor. That came as a surprise to Robert Martin, the man who prosecuted Stanley Williams and sent him to death row. I just was astonished that uh, a judge would, would say that. Stanley was a very brutal person, and I would see no moral equivalent between what he's doing with the books and the crimes that have been charged. Do you think that he has redeemed himself? No, I, I don't. I think perhaps before his God in some way. That's a private affair. Let me put it to you this way. If you're an alcoholic, to be cured or to be rehabilitated, the first thing you have to do is to admit that you're an alcoholic. 
he's never admitted that he's a murderer. Therefore, how can he be rehabilitated? What's more, Vernell Crittenden says that if Stanley Williams were totally rehabilitated, he would not only admit to the murders, he would also agree to be debriefed by prison officials, giving them information about the Crips and the way they operate, something Williams has so far refused to do. So you think that today, by sitting down and talking to prison authorities, he could help diffuse the situation on the streets? By him being himself involved in debriefing, it opens the door for others that are in the Crip gang to come forward, and they will tell their stories. But when they see their original godfather, who stands tall in the face of, as they say, in the face of death, and he refuses to tell anything, then that makes that young 16-year-old that's out there with that weapon feel just as committed. But what information could he have that would be of, of any value to law enforcement authorities who were investigating present-day gang activity when he's been so... he's been locked up for over 20 years? There is a great deal of contact that go on between the outside community and the inmates within these walls. He can explain to us how they gain their money, how they set up their trafficking. He can explain on how they have set up for the, the collection of weapons. Stanley Williams told me he doesn't have anything to give. He has no current information about the Crips. And even if he did, he says it would violate his code of honor to be debriefed. I have to say that the word debriefing is a euphemistic term for snitching. And uh, my, my convictions won't allow that. We need to have role models, particularly in our African-American communities, and a role model that says, I don't snitch on gang members, I don't care how violent or what acts they carry out, I think is the wrong message. Because gangs are running rapid through our communities. Young people out there killing one another, and they're buying into the same code of silence that Stanley w Williams is sharing with you today. Nevertheless, Professor Philip Gasper believes that the positive message Stanley Williams is sharing with children across the country in his books makes him worth more to society alive than dead. Well, what good would come from executing this guy? Here's somebody who is saying to kids, I can show you that there's a different way, somebody who they will listen to. If Stan is dead, then there aren't very many other people who can have that same kind of impact and influence on, on kids' lives. Stanley, how do you convince people that you are worthy? The reality is that people would look at you and remember the way you were and say, this guy was convicted, he's lost his appeals, he's on death row, he got what he deserved. Yes, well, they'll, they'll be, I can see where they would say something like that. I mean, I'm just trying to remain optimistic and continue to do the things that I do. I, I don't have the power to stop uh, these people from executing me. I wish I did, but I don't. If Stanley Williams loses his remaining legal appeals, he is expected to ask California Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger for clemency, which could commute his sentence to life in prison. If the governor denies his request, Williams could be executed within a year.